Good morning, friends. It's Shirley, and today I am at home. Uh, today in Nova Scotia is uh, um, a holiday, so I'm at home today instead of at the store, and I thought I had a few projects I wanted to work on and finish off that I would just pop on live to show you a few things that I uh, have in store. So I know that today being a holiday in Nova Scotia, there's many people at home, um, and it's a rainy day here, so, you know, it's not... A day they can get out and go skiing or do anything. Sadly, we don't have any snow, but um, it's a good day to work on some crafts and get some projects done. So I wanted to start by showing you now. If there's any comments and stuff, I'm doing this by myself today. I don't have a camera person. So if there's any comments or questions, I will go back. I'm just checking to see. Um, I am live, so I will go back and answer the questions afterwards. So I wanted to say, first of all, the new IOD release, which is our Orchid and Designs. Many of you, if you've been into the shop or you've been on our Square online store, which is lilyplumvintage.square.site, you can go through and browse all the paint inlays, transfers, there's stamps and there's molds and there's so much in this product line. That makes it so easy for anybody to be creative and to, you know, maybe update some things. So I wanted to show that today. And um, so one of the things I've had this uh, pottery crock for a long time. I actually have several pieces to it. I bought probably 30 years ago um, from a potter down in the states. And as you can see, very typical 1990s. It has like this blue glaze heart in it, which I'm all about, you know what, if it doesn't work for you, turn it around. I actually use this for a utensil holder in my kitchen. But I thought, you know what, I'm going to cover this with a crockery, uh, like an old marmalade crockery stamp by IOD using the clay. So I wanted to show you that today because I was like, oh, I'm going to do this. Well, I might as well show it live, right, so people can see. So there's many things, even if you go to thrift shops, you can get stuff from the 80s and the 90s that maybe like, you know you just don't love but it has great potential that's the thing so you can update anything and i say like you know make it relevant so this although it was very popular in the 90s is no longer popular so um i'm going to update that today but i want to start with first we show you what a, a paint inlay is and this is by the urn orchid design sisters so um, they came out paint inlays, I think about a year ago. Um, I'll be honest, they do take a little bit of practice. Um, and you know, it really comes down to finding the right amount of paint. Um, and this works best with a chalk style paint. Although I haven't tried it yet, but a lot of retailers are doing, you also using it with like a clear coat or a tough coat. So you can do that as well. Um, so I wanted to show you here. This is one of the new ones, and it is a paint inlay. So what does that mean? So they're in this package. You get eight separate sheets, and they're absolutely gorgeous. These are, you know, what I would call French Country. I'm just going to come and show you here. French Country designs on the sheets. Um, and, you know, I'm going to say relevant French Country. Just look and see. I can't see any comments or anything. I kind of asked to... Uh, to see them pop up but anyhow like i said i will go back and check afterwards so if you're watching let us know let me know where you're watching from today are you home in nova scotia are you watching from away so we have lots of followers from all over so these are paint inlay sheets so we get eight sheets in the pack and there's tons of uh, designs on it so in the pack there's these sheets that are like tissue paper but they're grid lined and the design, I'm going to show you, so these are very French, this pack is very French country. There's lots of other designs as well. So I love this. Take a look at that. Um, so this is actually paint on the sheets. And so what you have to do is lay it into wet paint to reactivate it. And this is not a one and done. You can use it up to two or three times. It gets a little bit more faded with each time that you use it. But this is one sheet and... I'm going to show you, um, I love this by the way, I just have a, like an artist board here and I painted this in, so the first coat is dry on this 
and it's painted in country chic this is a chalk style all on paint by country chic it's called cheesecake so it's a very creamy white um and i have like um, some texture to this board as well from before so i'm just kind of reusing a board so that's my first coat on there dry and then i'm just going to take my paper so i picked up this design because i find like it will fit this board really well i'm going to cut off the the spoon and the fork so that's going to be my my design that i'm going to be adding so all you do is with this sheet it has grid lines on the back so you can actually line stuff up and also cut it straight so i'm just going to go across here and cut this off so because i'm not going to i'm going to save that other design and these are you know really fun that you can kind of piece them if you're doing a big piece of furniture so first of all you can use these like i said this painting like you can use more than once but also too like you can do signs with them you can put them on furniture you know the sky's the limit so now you can see like that's the right size for that board okay now so before i I'm going to put that on because it takes a while to dry and I don't know if I'll have enough time to show you. I might have to do a quick little video again a little bit later and show you kind of peeling off and getting the image there because it has to dry and usually takes about a half hour to an hour. So I won't be on that long. But so here's my board, what I'm going to do, and then I'll flip through. I will flip through the book and kind of show you. So one, I just opened this as a brand new jar, kind of chic paint and um, chalk cell paint uh, this paint is made in canada chalk cell paint is quite creamy and i gotta tell you favorite favorite paintbrush we do sell a ton of these um, it's this is a kind of a creamier paint and if you want texture with a chalk cell paint basically you can kind of don't worry about smoothing it out so much so i'm going to just put a quick coat on here because I already have my base coat and I'm going to go right from one side of the board to the other and fill this in and I've kind of discovered through trial and error because I have played <laughs> um, Sarah and Krista and um, we we have played with the IOD uh, inlays at the store before when they first came out and it really comes down to knowing like how much paint to have on and chalk cell paint does dry fast, so I'm just doing a, a healthy coat of wet paint here. And if you want texture, you can paint like what I call is like thatch. So you're kind of back and forth and just making some different textures with it. So now I have a wet coat on here. And while the paint is still wet, I'm taking my inlay with the uh, image up. I'm going to turn that image and face it down into my board and I'm going to line this up. So I'm just going to lay this into here and I want to make sure there's uh, the names are on the bottom. So I want to make sure that I get all of that in there and I'm just centering it. I'm actually, oops, you can move it a little bit there. I'm going to center it, make sure I get that where I want it. And then I'm just going to go and gently press it into the wet paint. Now there will be some wrinkles and crinkles. And the one thing about the paint inlays, they are supposed to look, um, you know, like old wallpaper, you know, so it's not perfect. Some people use a brayer um, to smooth it out. And I find that it can kind of push some excess paint out as well. And hopefully I get enough on there. But if it does turn out perfect, that's the whole point. It's supposed to look really old. And then you can use a mister, but I forgot mine at the store. Um, we have fusion spray misters. So I'm at home today doing this. I don't have everything that I normally would have. So I have a really wet piece of paper towel. And all I'm doing now is pressing on top. And what it does is kind of the water will help activate the paint on the sheet. So keep in mind, paint inlays, it actually has paint on it. And I'll show you. You can see how that one's popping a little bit there. You can see it a little bit more. So I'm just going to go through and wet all this down. So that will help activate that. And I'm just pressing it through. Make sure that 
I get all of that image. So it's it's not dripping wet, but it is moist, right? So my paper now is moist. So I'm gonna show you this in a second. And then I'm gonna just set it aside. Clean my mess there, do a little bit of paint on my hand. I'll show you. I'm gonna set it aside and let it dry. So I'll have to pop on later and show you um, just removing the tissue paper. So that's what it's going to look like, but we're actually going to be peeling the sheet off and I'll show you the transfer of the image. But this has to dry for a good, um, until it's dry to touch. And then I'm gonna remist it and remove it. But look at the design, isn't that pretty? So I'm just making a little wall hanging for here at my home. Um, and these are just little wooden artist boards that we use in classes. So that is kind of how you apply um, a paint inlay. Now my brush here, I will say that um, these brushes I've been using, well, I guess this one, you can see the handles, not, you know, it's been well used and loved. These brushes are six years old. We have about 30 of them on the go. Um, from classes and workshops and painting furniture. This is a one and a half inch oval by Country Chic. It's got really soft filaments and it holds a lot of paint. And I'll show you, this is another one. The handle's a little bit different. I'm gonna pop that in water because um, paint does dry really fast, whether it be Fusion, which is a high grade acrylic, or a chalk base paint like Country Chic, you don't want your brushes to dry out. So it's really important, like when you're working and stuff, to either put them in a baggie um, to keep them moist or pop them into water. So um, they hold a lot of paint and because the filaments are so fine and so um, smooth and soft, you get a really nice finish on furniture if you're going for a smooth finish, which normally what I do. Um, so these are $22.95 at the shop. Um, if you go on our square site, you just go under Country Chic and then in there you'll see the brushes. They come in a one and a half inch or two inch and like I said, five years, we're still using the same brushes. I've only thrown, I think, three out in five, six years. And that was my fault because I used it with like, you know, paint that I shouldn't have. <laughs> but, um, and this one's been used with primer. So, and I typically tell people don't use your good brushes with primer because primer, you know, some of it's not water-based. So um, keep your good brushes for paint only. The Country Chic paint right now, this is a 16 ounce and 16 ounce is, and this is almost the color of my kitchen cupboards behind me, you can see here. Um, 16 ounce will cover uh, 60, sorry. Yeah, 65 square feet. Fusion covers 75, so uh, Fusion's a little bit thinner style of paint. Both have amazing coverage. Usually with the white, so you're looking at two to three coats of all brands of paint because of pigmentation, but I really like this paint. It does not have to be sealed, it's optional. So if you want to seal it with waxes or clear coat, you can. If you're painting kitchen cupboards, which I have done kitchen cupboards, kind of this color before, like at our cottage. If you, uh, I would suggest with uh, this style of paint, you definitely want to seal it with a clear coat. But So you can paint everything from, you know, exterior projects, you can paint your front door, you can paint, you know, signs or furniture, whatever. But it's a really great product. This is VOC free, there's no odor to it, and it's certified safe for kids, cribs, and toys. So this line is certified safe for children. So I gotta say, like, this is a, a really good environmentally friendly brand, okay? All our paints are environmentally friendly, but this one is wonderful. Okay, so that's how I started with my paint and light, and I'll show you later about removing it, and then you can see the image be revealed. So the back to the booklet. So this is the booklet. They're 65, I believe, 65.95. Um, but you get eight sheets, and each sheet has lots of different designs. And they're they're just so gorgeous. So this is so I don't get any got the light ring there, so we don't get. To, uh, it's just soft and beautiful. So each sheet comes in between two tissue paper sheets and there's lots of different like florals, but I gotta show you this one. There's a couple of them in this pack that love and I'm gonna keep it for furniture because I have an idea for this one. I gotta show you this design. So how pretty this is, right? Like, it's just gorgeous. So I'm one, you can tell, I have seen pictures in my house. 
I have a lot of white on white going on. And I have some soft greens and blues. But, like, this is so me. So, I love this pack. I gotta say, the IOD sisters, Sally and Josie, outdid themselves on this pack. Um, it's just beautiful. So, there's, like, sunflowers, lots of images of birds. There's, uh, sorry, bees. There's little uh, forks and knives and some fonts. And take a look at this one. And again, you can use the paint inlays, unlike the transfers or a one and done, once you stick them on, they're done. Paint inlays, because it's paint on paper, you can use it more than once. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? That beautiful rooster and the design. And if you don't want to use the full sheet, you can always kind of cut off this floral to the top and just use the rooster. Like you can go through and cut. And to show you the back side, do you see the little grid lines? So the grid lines help you cut and it helps you um, line stuff on, on furniture. And then you can just tape your pieces on to hold them in place as well, like to get your design figured out where you're going to lay it with painter's tape. So I use painter's tape a lot. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside. That is our paint inlays. So drop into the store. We do have a few small pieces if you want to take a little sample piece home. We have uh, roast chintz on the go. You can take a little sample piece at home and practice with it and give it a try. And then, because I know a lot of people go, well, you know, it's a little bit of investment at $65. I agree. But this pack, you'll do lots of projects with it. It's not like 65 is just one project. It's lots and lots of projects. We have many packs that we've opened and we've only used like, you know, three or four sheets. We still have other projects that we can do with it. So they're well worth their money. Uh, especially if you like to paint and create and they're just they're easy right so okay so i'm going to set this one aside and then move on to our next thing i wanted to show you it's over here all right so i think it was last week yeah it would have been last wednesday when we got last tuesday on release day or wednesday we got um our order from IOD, which was our spring release, which we were super excited to get. Release day was Valentine's Day. What a perfect day for that. And one of the molds, so these are silicone based molds. You can see it's flexi. Um, this is one of the new molds that got released. And this one's really sweet. It has like a frog and dragonfly and hummingbird. It's got little snails and a turtle and a little nude on there. And these, if you have never used them before, like I said, they're based on, they're made out of silicone. You see that there. And these are food grade safe. So they can go in the oven up to 400 degrees. If you use them for food, keep them for food. We use them for crafts. And so these, you can also use different mediums, but you can see the details in those there. That is cornstarch I have on the dragonfly. So I'm gonna show you my pot here. So we started this last week. So this is just a plain, I have like supplies in here. Let me take that out so I can show you. This is just a terracotta pot, but you could do this with a plastic pot or anything. So again, this is I'm using Country Chic paint on this one. And go back and watch last week. Uh, I think it was last week, last Wednesday. Um, if you go to our videos and go through, you see where I started this pot. And I used a texture medium, which is a lot of times people are talking about like salt wash. Um, those are just brands, right? Like, so this one's called Texture Powder by Country Chic and it's al fresco in the Fusion line. But you mix it with the paint and it adds a little bit of texture. So this kind of now feels like a concrete and this is two different paint colors. So watch that other video, it shows how I started. But what I want to show you, so here we go. That dragonfly I showed you in the mold you see it there? Now, I haven't painted it yet. So there's the dragonfly. And I added some flowers from another one. And did, we did this trim. Vanessa and I did this trim. And then here, you can see a fern. So I was going to add more to this pot. But I wanted to show you today, because I told everyone I would show them um, if I was going to seal this, I was going to add some wax to it. So that way I can show you the difference when you add, like I'm going to use an antique and wax, which is a dark wax, um, what that looks like. Now you can, I'm using up old waxes, 
So this is a Miss Mustard Seed Antiquing Wax, which is, this is the original formula one that was made by Clapman's, who does the waxes for fusion. So um, the fusion wax is the same wax as this, which I absolutely love. Uh, it's one of my favorite waxes to use. So this is a dark brownish gray, and I'm gonna put that on there and show you how that brings up the detail. It makes such a difference. But just before I do that, or actually, let me do that first. So I'm going to use a wax brush for this because I need to kind of push the detail out. And so this is a wax brush. Sometimes we do have these in the store. Soft waxes, you don't always have to use a wax brush. But I do recommend with, like, when you're trying to get into details, um, we sell these at the shop. And I think they're $27.95. But the bristles or the filaments um, are really coarse. So they're really stiff, so that way it allows the wax to kind of push in. So that's what I'm using today. And you would just take a little bit of your wax and kind of spoon it out onto a little uh, plate. And normally I have a little plate here, but I forgot it. So I'm just going to take some out. And I'm going to put it on the bottom of my wax brush. So you just want to add a little bit to your wax brush. Normally, like, put a spoon onto a plate. I'll do my trick I'm doing here and so basically with this is that you take your detail area now I purposely didn't fill all this in with paint some of its white so I want to have like different colors and so what I'm doing see how dark that is so in a circle motion I'm using my wax brush to kind of really push that dark antiquing wax into those areas that I've applied, this is the IOD clay. Now this clay has been dry for a week, but I would suggest when you glue on what clay, you can paint it within about a half hour, but if you wanna seal it with a wax or something, I usually wait a couple of days until the, the clay is completely dry. And do you see how dark that is now? And then basically you take, a soft microfiber cloth, which I forgot mine. Boy, not too well. You can blot it like that to take the excess off, or you can rub it. So what I'm going to end up doing is leaving it darker in some areas and lighter, and then I'll do that over the whole pot when I'm all done the pot. So I'm going to kind of do the rest of these flowers so you can see it today. So it's just kind of pushing the dark antiquing wax and there's different tinted waxes that you can use. Um, we have white, which would give kind of like a whitewash effect. We also have like a rose gold, there's copper. Oh, um, there's clear, of course, if you just want to seal something. Um, the clear helps you correct your mistakes as well. If you put too much of the dark antiquing wax on, you can actually erase it. And just to kind of show you how this looks now, how much detail pops there. And I'll do that dragonfly too, because I want to show you the difference in the dragonfly. And you can do this in kind of sections. You can kind of like rub it on the whole thing. It does change the look and I'm just going to rub some of this back. And then I'll show a picture when this is all done, when I get it all finished. But I just kind of wanted to show how much difference antiquing wax makes. So, you know how that dragonfly was so flat before, right? So it's a little bit darker in areas, but it just kind of like really brings out the detail. So I'm going to go through and do the whole thing and then I'll show you a picture of it when it's all done. You see it just kind of makes the where it's kind of like two-tone like a I think I use Sunday tea and a gray here and I'm going to do the laurel all around the top too. And then I'm going to add um, a little snail and probably a frog but this will be at the shop so you can take a look if you want to and I'll post a picture later when it's all finished with some floral plants in it. If you are doing this for outside um, you may not want to use wax because wax is an oil product and so wax melts in heat so if you're putting it a planter outside you would want to use a glaze to get that effect and then you would seal this so that way because terracotta is porous isn't it so water 
will soak through the terracotta or the clay and you don't want to damage your pot. So you can use a exterior sealant on that. I use mine indoors and I use a lot of faux floral so I don't worry about it. So I, I really like the look and I like working with the wax. So I wanted to show you that today. People were asking about applying the top coat. So that's using the mold with clay and I'll show you how to do that too. Okay, so I'm gonna put my wax brush away so it doesn't dry out. Wax cures or hardens in 30 days. Doesn't mean you can't use it, but what, you know, if you're putting on furniture, and I use it on furniture a lot, <laughs> I love the wax. Um, what it means is that, you know, your maximum protection, um, with same with paint, it's, paint takes normally 21 to 30 days, depending on heat, temperature, and humidity, all those kind of things affects how long it takes for paint to actually get to its um, cure state, which is its hardened state. And I would say to customers in the first couple of weeks of taking a freshly painted piece of furniture to be gentle with it, to, you know, don't abuse it. And always, like if you're painting coffee tables or your dining room table, you want to make sure that you put a sealant on it. That sealant, like clear coat or tough coat, needs to be applied in thin coats, not applied heavy because it won't cure right. It should be thin coats, it's crystal clear, and it's hard as a rock. And the thing is, is that always with furniture, especially dining room tables, we should be using place packs and coasters to prevent damage. We've all been there and have had heat scorches on our dining room tables, and that's because of moisture coming from hot dishes, and it basically damages the finish. Whether it's a stained piece of furniture with uh, polyurethane or a varnish on it, Heat and moisture is is always going to damage furniture, painted or otherwise. So keep in mind, you want to use your furniture appropriately. <laughs> Don't abuse it. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside. And I'm just checking on this a little bit. It's still quite moist, so we have to let this dry more. But it is starting to fade there a little bit. And that means it's drying. So the image is drying on the paper and eventually I'm going to peel the paper back off. Okay. So the other thing I wanted to show you was using the molds with the clay. So this is a bag of clay that I started last week. And one of these blocks, this is a paper pulp clay. Um, I had open blocks in the summer and I was still able to use. So um, when you're using them, you want to make sure that you keep them in Ziploc baggies so that way it doesn't dry out. That's so important because the whole point of a paper pulp clay is that, you know, we want it to dry so we can put it on our projects and then it becomes hard and we can paint it and do whatever we want with it. People also use this um, for furniture repairs and pieces of moldings that are broken. We've done that like when you have little detail areas and you know you get missing pieces over the year you can repair it with stuff like this but if um with these molds i will say too i know i said it was food grade safe and you can use it for baking and cooking but you can also use this with like a casting resin um, it doesn't have to be with the clay people use them with silicone and stuff like that so basically you're pushing them in to there um, so you can use it with the mold or what i want to show you today and I will show you doing it that way. So this is my jug here, my pottery uh, piece that I've had for years that I want to just update. So um, I thought today that I would show you how to do that with using, this is now with the new uh, stamps that just came out, there's some really nice ones on that too, but my copy's at the store. But I want to show you, this one's called crockery, and you can put these on just about anything. You can use inks, of course, um, with the stamps. Uh, they're silicone as well, so they're flexible, and they just come off of the backs of the uh, images here. They just come off. But you can use this with inks, and you can use it with paint. You can roll it on with paint, or I'm gonna use it to push into a piece of clay. So what I want to do, there's one here that says marmalade on it, and I'll show you what it looks like here. 
So these are silicone, and this is to um, like uh, like an old crock that would have had like a marmalade marmalade uh, image on the front. Matter of fact, I have a couple of them there. I'm going to show you one. So that's what I'm going to put on the front. I'm going to put on the front of this, and I'm going to show you one I have. So, as you know, I love everything old. <laughs> so look at this old. This is from England. Um, it is a Dundee orange marmalade, 12 ounce, 12 fluid ounces jar. I use it for old cutlery and stuff. I just love collecting stuff like this. So I just kind of keep a jar of it um, here in the kitchen. And so that's what we're going to make that kind of look like. So I thought, how sweet would that be if I use a crockery stamp in the clay? Because I really want to hide this. So I had the option I could paint it, but I don't want to paint it. I'm just going to add something to it to cover it. Now, we're going to roll out the clay. And this image is not quite big enough to cover all of that blue image. But I'm just going to cut my clay a little bit bigger so it looks. And then I'm going to glue it on. So all you do is take your stamp and first I'm going to take my clay, which I have out here. I'm going to put a little bit of cornstarch on just a, a cutting board here so it doesn't stick so I can lift it off. Okay, so I'm just going to rub that on there. That's just plain cornstarch, which we use the dust and the mold as well. And there it is. So. I'm just going to give that a quick dusting. And then you just wash these off afterwards, just uh, warm soap and water. So I don't want that to stick into my clay. And my clay, I'm going to roll this out. And let's see if I can get a rolling pin here, guys. So, rolling pin, right? i got to show you this. So <laughs> this is an old wooden rolling pin. This was my mom's from when I was a little girl. And we made lots of cookies using you know this rolling pin baking pies and everything so i'm fortunate enough i'm the youngest of four girls i ended up getting the rolling pin it has been well used over the years and every time i bake i use this rolling pin so okay this is just a a wood pulp paper clay so i'm not worried about toxicity or anything like that and then I'm taking that stamp. Now, normally this stamp, we would stamp it with ink or paint. Well, instead, this is a raised image. I'm going to push it into the clay. So I'm centering it there. And then I'm going to take my rolling pin, and I'm going to just push it into the clay. Okay? And see how it turns out. And if I don't like it, I can just do it again. Which I smudged it a little bit. So, I'm going to try it again. So, not a big deal. It's clay. <laughs> it's just like when we play Play-Doh with children. I'm just going to roll it up into a ball again and then re-roll it out. Okay, I'm going to try that again. So, that's the fun thing with something like this. If, you know, it's the same with trying the molds like this. If you, you know, people go, oh, I'm, you know, I might mess it up. Listen. Everything takes practice. We're not good at something the first time we try it. It's just like when we were kids, learning how to ride a bike. It takes practice to learn, and sometimes we, it takes a couple times before we get like, okay, I got enough paint, or oh, you know what? Sometimes you discover things by accident. It turns out better than you think. Okay, so I'm gonna push this down. I'm not gonna roll it, because I think rolling it, rolling it kind of like moved it a little bit. So I'm going to use my hand, hold one in place, and the other one really push down into the clay so that I'm getting the full, the full image. And then I'm going to switch hands here and do the other side. So I want to really make sure that that image is pushed into clay. And if it's not perfect, it's okay, because if you've ever looked at old antique crockery and stuff like that, it is far from perfect. Okay. And then all I'm going to do is pull this back up. There, that's better. And I'll show you on the board before I take it off. It's really cute. So, there's the image there stamped into the clay. Look at that. So, now 
what I want to do. I might even leave that that size. I'm going to glue that on the front of there. And I am one to use, <laughs> I don't know how many bottles of these I have out to go. Because I repair furniture, um, LePage's wood glue is, I've always used it. My dad used it, I've used it. It is amazing with gluing wood together for repairs. If you have old chairs with spindles and your chair's kind of loose, or you have drawers you want to fix or anything, this is the glue to use. But I also use it, I also use it for doing something like this. Now, you know what? I kind of like the shape of that. I'm okay with it looking like that. So, and again, so look, it just covers that whole area. And if I wanted to, I could use something like a little knife here, uh, just, just a little craft knife, and just kind of cut some edges off. But you know what? I think I'm going to leave it because I'm going to go with that um, because I'm going to end up putting some wax into that, some dark wax, and it's going to bring that image out so it won't be flat and white. So what I'm going to do while well, this clay is wet, oh, shoot, i got a brand new jar here. I need to cut that off. I grabbed the brand new jar or bottle of uh, glue. So get that later. So basically, I'm going to squeeze some glue onto this, so that way we get it stuck on there well. Now you want to make sure I didn't go right to the edges there, guys. I'm going to use my finger and kind of smear that out a little bit. And you don't want glue to squish out underneath your design. So, but I also want to make sure it's right to the edges because I don't want the clay lifting when it dries. So I'm just smearing that on. There we go. Wipe my finger off there. And then I'm going to place it on my piece. Make sure I have it the right way. I just turned it around. And I'm going to position it there. Like my fingers off. So this clay is damp, and while it's damp, it's easy to work with. And you just want to be careful not to squish your pattern or design, but it's okay for me to kind of play with the edges a little bit. And I kind of like I like that. And so when this dries a little bit, uh, well actually it will probably like I don't want to wax it until it's completely dry. And if you are doing a curved surface and you're worried about sliding or anything, you can always use a piece of painter's tape to hold on so that way it doesn't move. So let me cap this off here. And then I'll show you, I'm going to make a little snail there with the mold. But I wanted to show you this. And this is so much better than that 1990s heart. Take a look at that, right? Marmalade. So I'm going to go through and maybe trim this up a little bit. And it's just a, a rough piece of clay, but it actually looks kind of cool like that. I might trim that piece off right there, actually. So I'm just going to use, this is my, you know, just a little tool here. And I'm just going to go through and cut that. So I'm just going to come back here so you can see this a little bit. And that one little piece is a little bit high. I'm just going to cut it off. I'm just going to pull that off. And I'm just going to wipe that glue because I don't I need to, I don't want the glue there because I glued that section. I'm going to wipe that off, push my clay up a little bit so that it doesn't look perfect. I want the edge to look like rough, right? So I'm just going to push that up a little bit. And you can thin it out on the edges if you want to as well. So if you don't want it too thick. You just push down on it and and spread your clay a little bit. There, I like that a little bit better. And again, showing you. So see how I turned the top? And there. So pretty. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. Okay. So I'm gonna let that dry. And then I'm going to do that dark antiquing wax like I showed you with the pot. I'm going to do the same thing with that crock. So I have other pieces in this pottery. And you know, pottery is fairly expensive. And that's why over the years I was like, I didn't have the heart to get rid of it. Because I just, you know, hand done pottery. And I've had it for 30 years. So I want to like use and reuse. If you don't love it, 
then get rid of it. It becomes clutter. Our styles change always. If you don't love it anymore, get rid of it. Some people become hoarders because they want to part with stuff. I keep stuff that I love and I always love this jug. So when I moved into this house and I thought, oh, I haven't used these in a little bit. Um, so I used it for my utensils and it's big enough to open for my wooden spoons and stuff. Um, but I turned it backwards so you can see behind me, it's like it's almost the same color as my cabinets. And I have a dark uh, glass tile under my cabinet there. So it worked really well. So I just turned it backwards. But I'm tired of, you know, having it like that. I said, I'm going to update these and show you how easy it is. So I'll post a picture of that later done so you can see it. Amazing, right? So the clay you can use with the molds. You can use it with stamps. And you can push the image into them so you can you know people make jewelry with this stuff like it's just there's so much you can do with it okay so i'm going to put that aside i don't need that i don't i'm not even worried about wood glue sets in about 10 minutes if you're repairing furniture it takes 24 hours like i wouldn't sit on a chair for 24 hours but as far as something like this it sets in about 10 minutes so it's a really good glue to use um, so my clay, I'm just going to make sure that that's zipped up there and that's aside. And what I'll show you now is, um, did I, okay. So what I'm going to show you now, there it is. That's what I was looking for because I have to wash that. So I'm going to throw that in the sink so I don't forget. So just warm soapy water is all you need to wash those items up. And same as I don't need my rolling pin, my vintage rolling pin anymore. It's probably from the 1950s. That's when my parents got married. Um, so what I want to do is do just a couple little things there. Checking on this. This is still moist, so I won't be able to show you this today. Uh, until later today, I'll show you how to take it off. So I'm going to add a little bit more to our pot that I started, right? So it's not quite done yet, so I'm going to add a little snail. I'm going to show you how to do a snail. And I'll add it to the pot, and then that will be it for today. I figured there'd be people at home today because it's a holiday, and you know, have a chance to maybe pop on and watch for a little bit, or you can always watch it back and replay. And if you're looking for other videos, all you have to do is on our Facebook page, go to photos and videos, and just go back through. Uh, we do have a class coming up it's next Sunday, or it's coming Sunday, I guess. Um, it's a kitchen cabinet clinic kind of class. We're going to learn how to paint kitchen cabinet doors. Um, that class is full. I, a lot of people have asked me about it. Uh, I believe my next one I'll do will be April. So I don't offer the classes like I used to. I used to do two a week um, for the first couple of years. Then COVID happened, of course. And then I kind of got away from doing the classes because we are, our business has evolved so much. It was really um, in the beginning, a lot about paint and furniture and a lot about teaching classes and stuff, but we're so busy with the shop with home decor and gift and painting furniture still that, uh, just, you know, personally myself, I, you know, it's hard to uh, be able to do it all. So, um, if you see a class posted is my point, do not delay because they fill up quickly. So book a seat and, uh, I do a few a few times a year so okay what I'm going to show you now is to do a little snail here and I'm going to use my clay again and in order for these to pop out really easy so this is really flexy I like to put cornstarch down first and it just prevents um, that brush is wet so I don't want to use that one it just prevents um, it from sticking and that way you don't lose any of the design so I'm just putting a little bit of cornstarch there so I'm just going to tap it in I'll do two snails here I'm just going to tap it into my design so that way it pops right out and all I'm going to do now is use my clay so you see when I'm using clay like always put it back in the bag so it doesn't dry out I'm going to pinch off a little bit of clay here I'm going to work it in my hand a little bit. Now this one's quite moist, um, which is better than being dry. So I'm just going to kind of work it with my hands a little bit. 
and roll it. So it's pretty easy to work with. And yeah, it leaves like a little white residue, but it just washes right off. So it's, it's non-toxic. So I'm going to pinch a little bit off and I'm going to push it into my mold here. So I'm just using my fingers and pushing it down into my mold. And what I'm doing now is using my thumb and I'm kind of pulling back. And I taught a class on this last week. And, um, you know, the thing is, if it doesn't turn out, that's okay because it's just clay. You just try again. So practice makes perfect. Now with these molds, they have, um, now this is, this piece is a little bit damp. Um, they have a little edge on them and I'm going to show you what it should look like when you pull them back. So that way you can see it really well. Sorry to get my whole countertop in. I'm have to keep coming into the camera. Okay. So with the molds, there's little lips around the little raised around each design. And that is kind of like your break point. So I want to show you, there's my snail. And so it should be smooth around that. And you want to make sure it's flat. So now that I have that in there, all I'm going to do is this is very flexy. And if it doesn't turn out, don't worry, you can try again. I'm just turning my it over and I'm bending. I'm just bending my design. And oh, there we go. Now I'll show you. So, I'm just going to put on my hand there. Cute little snail just pop right out. So, get that up there. There, little tiny snail. So, it has lots of detail in it. And so, now just with the wood glue that I used before, I'm just going to put it on my pot. And you can, you know, you don't have to use these just on flower pots. Like I said, you can use it on furniture. You can make signs with them. You can do a combination of both. But look, I just put a little snail there on the pot and I just glue it on. I can put it down here and you can layer them as well. So I can put it over the fern because I have a fern here. I think that looks kind of cute there. So that's where I'm going to put it. So again, I'm just going to open my wood glue. This is my LePage's wood glue I used. And I am just going to add a little bit to the back. And I'm just going to use again. I, you can use a paintbrush or anything like that. I used to use paintbrushes, and then I soon discovered it was faster and easier, honestly, just to use my hand. Because you can get it completely on the entire image without any extra glue. And there we go. I'm just going to you can put it a little bit angled if you want. I just learned it over my, there we go over my fern and just be careful not to push down on it too much there and there it is on the bottom of the pot so it's going to be really cute when it's all done and again i'll take a picture to show you what it looks like when it's finished so and then my excess clay i'm just going to put it right back in the bag so i just wanted to pop on today show you a couple of things i'll have to do a video later this is still wet i have to wait for the paper to dry completely it's almost there but I feel like if I, well, I can try it if it doesn't work. Um, let me just rinse this out. If it doesn't work, I can always just give it another shot, but I'm kind of rushing it a bit. So this section here is dry. So I'm going to show you because once it's dry to touch, then you basically take a mister or a wet cloth again and you're re-wetting it. And so again, you're reactivating the paint that's on those paint inlays. So it's paint on paper, okay? Like a soft tissue paper. So I'm just gonna wet that section. And I usually wait about 30 seconds before I start lifting it. So that way that has time to really reactivate, okay? So this is damp. I'm just kind of pressing through and making sure that everything is wet. And then within a, a few seconds, I can lift it off and hopefully the image turns out like I want it. So keep in mind, um, 
paint inlays can take a little practice. I would say practice in something you're not worried about. If all else fails, you can always paint over it. These sheets you can use more than once. So you can use it a second and sometimes a third time. The image will just be, like as you remove the paint off the sheet, it will get just a little bit softer, the image every time. So I'm going through and make sure all of this is wet. And then all you do when I peel this off and it's wet, you just let your sheet dry out. And then once the sheet's dry, you can go ahead and use it again. And just be careful when you pull it off that um, you don't rip it. So this is an inlay versus a transfer. A transfer, you just rub on and you leave it. So it's been probably about 30 seconds on this side. So I'm going to show you. Here's my board. So wish me luck. <laughs> so I'm just gently going to pull. Okay. And some of the ink will stay on. I think I'll come a little bit closer and show you. So I know that Sarah and Vanessa, if you're watching, you're going to be happy with this one. <laughs> So, because sometimes it's epic fail for us and sometimes not so much. So look at, as I peel this back, see the image coming? Look how pretty that is. Oh my gosh, it is just so, so pretty. So the key with this, because we've had some that haven't turned out as well, the key is to make sure you have a good skim of chalk style paint. It does not work with an acrylic paint. You can try with a clear coat, however. And it's okay if there's crinkles and wrinkles. It adds to the character of it. But I just want to show you. Look at that. There's my image. Oh my gosh. It is so pretty. Right? That was really, really easy. And I hope that... Uh, Wanda, hi Wanda, so great you're uh, popping on today. Thanks so much for watching. Um, like this is just a little wooden artist board and I'm going to hang it on my wall here in the kitchen. I'll probably put it on that wall right there. That is so, so sweet. So now I just have the wet, damp piece of tissue. I'm just going to lay this and let it dry and then I can use this again. That's what I love about the transfers. And I would say, like, start with a small project. We started with furniture, of course, the first time we used these and was a little bit disappointed because when you start with something like furniture, you have to line up your pattern. It's like lining up wallpaper. So it was a little bit challenging, but that has turned out beautiful. So I hope you enjoyed my video today. Happy Heritage Day here in Nova Scotia. And if you have a chance, as always, send us off a message or pop in and see us. We'd love to see you at the store. We'll be back at the shop tomorrow. We're open 10 to 5. Have a great day, everyone.